Rivera, the standings. Giants won. They beat Dallas this afternoon. Philly trying to remain even with the Giants, and they beat them last week. Washington won coming from behind Dallas down at the bottom. Carolina 5-0, but being chased by Atlanta. Falcons won a close one against Tennessee today. They are 6-1. And, and, of course, Carolina has had its bye week, the reason Atlanta's already played seven games. Carolina won the toss. They have deferred. Graham Gano will kick off for the Panthers. Josh Huff, wide receiver by trade, run back man, sets up in the end zone. Smoke clearing from the pregame fireworks. This should be very good, very interesting. A lot of great stories along the way, and we begin, as most NFL games do these days, with a touchback. Let's take a look right now at the Eagle offense. Sam Bradford, Oklahoma. DeMarco Murray, Oklahoma. Riley Cooper, Florida. Josh Huff, Oregon. Jordan Matthews, Vanderbilt. Brent Selleck, Cincinnati. Jason Peters, Arkansas. Alan Barber, Missouri Southern. Jason Kelsey, Cincinnati. Matt Tobin, Iowa. Lane Johnson, Oklahoma. The Eagles, if you follow the NFL, you follow the Eagles in particular, you know that since Chip Kelly came along in 2013, they run a play about every 23 seconds. No huddle, everything is quick, everything is fast paced. They begin out of the shotgun with DeMarco Murray as the running back, and they swing it to him. And the former Dallas Cowboy, last year's rushing champion, picks up two yards out to the 22. Jared Allen makes the tackle. You're going to see these two inside linebackers here all night long. It's amazing the plays that they can get to. Time after time, you will see Thomas Davis and Luke Keekley on the point of attack, no matter where it is on the field. Second down and eight. The officials holding the snap until Carolina had a chance to substitute defensively at DeMarco Murray, who had his first 100-yard game as an Eagle last week. Picks up about five. Sam Bradford, the number one overall pick in 2010 in the NFL, picked by the Rams out of Oklahoma, was the rookie of the year that year. Injured all of last season, injured for half of the 2013 season. So he played in only seven of 32 games in his last two years with the Rams. And on third and short, Murray burst through a hole. And DeMarco out to the 41-yard line, tackled by the safety, Kurt Coleman. Well, right off the bat, we see what Philadelphia did a week ago. Watch these two big guys here. They get the double team going against the Giants a week ago. They just created some huge holes running the football, and you finally got a chance to see DeMarco Murray the way he was running in Dallas as well. From the 40, he looks toward Murray and throws there. It's juggled and bobbled and incomplete. And he would have been smothered right away anyway because Jared Allen was in his face. Allen coming over in September in a deal with Chicago. Always going to want to bring some pressure. Keekley's coming around the edge there. But it is trying to get the ball in the hands of DeMarco Murray in a big hurry. But now comes in a weapon that I think Carolina saw quite enough of last year in Darren Sproles. Philly Rock beat them on a Monday night last year. Sacked Cam Newton nine times. Sproles had a big night. Sproles takes the handoff to the outside and around he goes. Up to the 44-yard line, Coney Ely makes the tackle, and that's going to set up a third down and six. It's an interesting play. Usually you have to go this way in this kind of a set, but this is a way to get to the same side as the back. It is just an alternate sort of running play that the Eagles use so that you can't offset against that set offensively. Third and six, crowd rising as one. And Bradford taking his time. Flag is down. Might have been moving along the offensive front. And that's caught by Zach Ertz. Could have been the right tackle moving. Lane Johnson looked like he took one step back. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense, number 65. That's a five-yard penalty. Still third down. Lane Johnson. Probably the biggest difference in the National Football League when you have to play on the road. You get so used to, as an offensive player, being able to hear that snap count as a tackle, and now you have to sort of guess a little bit. A lot of those penalties on the road. 
So that wipes out the first down. Philly has had a lot of trouble converting on third down, and they won't hear either because you got a sack by Mario Addison. He's a guy who doesn't play every snap, plays about half of them, but makes his presence felt in the offensive backfield very often. And he is going against one of the absolute best in the NFL and Jason Peters. That is a tremendous sack, tremendous effort by Mario Addison. So now Donnie Jones will have to punt. And the left footed eagle kicker sends it down toward Ted Ginn Jr. who makes a fair catch at the 13 yard line. So Cam Newton will take over deep in his own territory. Three minutes into the game in Charlotte. Sunday Night Football being brought to you by the Ford F-150. Every other truck is history. By GE, the digital company. It's also an industrial company. By Verizon, watch live primetime games with NFL Mobile only on Verizon. And by Bud Light, make the right call, drink responsibly. Sam Mills played 12 seasons in the NFL, the Panthers, before that the Saints, and his son, Sam Mills III, assistant defensive line coach. Sam was, a, his dad was a great, great guy who died much too young. At the end of the run back as we went to commercial there was a, a personal foul on Najee Good here it is that cost him 15 yards. So the Panthers say thank you very much we'll take the ball at the 28 instead of the 13 is Cam Newton who won the Heisman as did Bradford during his career at Oklahoma came of course at Auburn led into the national championship and like Bradford a number one pick in the NFL draft the year after Sam. And they start on the ground and they hand the ball off to Jonathan Stewart, who's tough, so tough. He proves it there. He proves it improving it for eight years. And he moves the pile. Now the Eagles think the ball came loose. They think they have recovered. There is no indication from any official yet. But the Eagles are starting to run off the field. We'll wait for Craig Rollstadt's crew to determine what's happened here. Still nothing from the guys in the striped shirts. But some eagle must have the ball at the bottom of that pile. No, they don't. <laughs> some, some way, as the play cock gets reset. Well, there was definitely a lot of fight in this one out of Jonathan Stewart. And because of the nature of that scrum, it was almost impossible to tell what happened. I don't think they could have reversed that regardless. Mm -hmm. Whatever they called on the field, maybe this gives us Elbow down, very hard to see anything at all in that. Nothing really to challenge. Philly thought they had it. They don't. Second down in the long yard. And the inside handoff here goes to Jonathan Stewart. Stewart inside the 40 and finally run out of bounds at the 29 by Nolan Carroll. Trey turn of the guard with a great block. Jonathan Stewart, who played in Oregon when Chip Kelly was the offensive coordinator, 36 yards. Going to get the pull by Trey Turner out front and a kick out, and really Greg Olson had nobody to block except down the field against Walter Thurman. And one of the questions in this game, the Philadelphia Eagles have a very small defensive backfield, not a lot of pure safety types, a lot of converted corners. And once these big backs get into the secondary, can the Eagles handle them? Now Mike Tolbert is in the backfield. Newton protected well, slings it over the middle, caught, and it'll be first and goal, Corey Brown, whose middle name is Philly. He went by Philly Brown last year, changed it back to Corey. Over the middle, Brown by any other name, good for 25. Watch the footwork here by Cam Newton. I mean, this guy, we watched him in practice the other day, doesn't even have to step into these throws. He can just sort of, I don't know, take a little side step and wing it. That was a shot. I think he is really confident, don't you, Al, coming out of that game in Seattle a week ago? The whole team. Yeah. You go to Seattle, you beat the Seahawks on the road, you're down double digits in the fourth quarter. That would breed a little confidence. Colbert stays in the backfield. He gets the handoff and into the end zone he goes. That took all of two and a half minutes. Stewart with two runs, a perfect pass to Brown. Colbert takes it in. Panthers take the lead. 
tell you, these big guys, especially these guards and Ryan Khalil, the center right here, they just get on people. These are some of the best interior offensive linemen in the National Football League. Trey Turner, Ryan Khalil, Andrew Norwell, and then you get, I don't even want to guess the weight of Mike Tolbert running behind it. Good luck if you're Philadelphia. Graham Gano now for the extra point. 33 yard extra point. A lot more missed this year than last year. Turned out to be a pretty good blue team. Nine and a half to go in the opening quarter. And just like Monday night, Philadelphia falls behind early. Doesn't matter where you are, don't miss a moment of Sunday night football with NBC Sports Live Extra. Take the game with you anywhere. Your laptop, tablet, and connected TVs. 72 degrees and cloudy in Charlotte. Took them all of four plays to go 72 yards. And Gano will send this one through the end zone. Let's take a look at the Panther defense. Coney Ely, University of Missouri. Starting up to the lake, University of Utah. K1 Short, Purdue. Jared Allen, Idaho State. Luke Keekley, Boston College. Thomas Davis, D, University of Georgia. Charles Tillman, D, University of Louisiana. Roman Harper, Roll Tide. Kirk Bowman, D, Ohio State University. Josh Norman, CCU. Vinay Wickery, San Jose State University. And there is Sean McDermott, who used to be in Philadelphia. He was there under the great late defensive coordinator Jim Johnson and McDermott's done an outstanding job with this Panther defense. As Philadelphia now in a second possession to fake to Murray and then it is picked off at the 20 yard line. Colin Jones was there and they're going to say he was down. It's Carolina ball at the 21 yard line. Wow. What a start for the Panthers. Anytime you try and fake that kind of a run, they want to hold that backside by throwing the football, but you got to hang on to it, and that's their best. Jordan Matthews just couldn't quite hang on to it. When that, once that thing gets popped up in the air, look out. Yeah, that, that's a gift. I mean, he doesn't even know it's there as he's trying to make the tackle. Look what I found. Then contact made by Matthews, and that's the end of the play at the 21 yard line. All turnovers are reviewed. It has been confirmed, and the Panthers will have it at the 21. That was a heck of a catch by wow. Colin Jones there. I think that was Kwan Short that got some pressure that forced that out of Bradford's hand a little sooner than he wanted to. So Jonathan Stewart now in the backfield, and there's two good runs. Of 9 and 36 on the first series. Here comes the blitz. Newton gets it away and on a slant hits Ted Ginn Jr. to the six. That, that, ball looked, that ball may have come out too. So Ginn goes down. Nolan Carroll winds up with it. Boy, this would be so similar to last week. They're going to say he was juggling it and maybe really it landed it on top of him. At least that's what I saw. Yeah, Philadelphia is going to contend. It's theirs. Rolstad will get together with the crew. I mean, clearly the ball is going to come out here. Ooh. I guess you might even argue he was down. So but crazy. It falls yeah. right into Carroll's. Yeah. I mean, last week in the, in the Giants game, you had basically the same thing. Donnell had it taken away by D'Amico Ryans. Is he down there is the question. So all turnovers, which it was ruled on the field to be reviewed. Here's the ground. You have to maintain control. Is an interception by Philadelphia. It'll be first and ten. It'll be first and ten pending the confirmation of it. Because they're looking at, at that in New York to make sure it is a pick. The previous play is under review. All right. Pretty wacky start to this one. Decision when we come back. They call it an interception, and it's very, very close. But we think it's going to stand. Take a look here. There's no question that the catch is made. Ginn, and then Carroll reaches in, and Ginn becomes a runner. He gets four steps in before he goes down 
and then Carroll rests the ball away. And they've been taking a long, long look. Here's Rolstad. After review, the ruling on the field stands. You tell me. <laughs> I, I don't know what a catch is. I don't know what an interception is. And you, partner? Well, you've got to be able to maintain control all the way to the ground, right? We've got that part. So going down, it was at the very least going to be an incomplete pass. There's no way this could have been a completed pass regardless because he didn't maintain control. So if it can be incomplete, it can be intercepted. And there it is. A bizarre start to this game. And Nolan Carroll now back-to-back -back weeks has made huge plays defensively. Picked six a week ago, and now that. And it looked like the Eagles might be in big trouble. And New York is saying that the ball was coming loose before the tackle, and had it dropped to the ground, it would have been incomplete. So here's a four-yard gain up to the 10. So similar to last week, the Giants went down the field quickly, led 7-0. It looked like another three and out for the Eagles, and the Giants had the ball. They rested it away on the interception, and then Bradford was the beneficiary, along with the Eagles, of a Demontre Moore personal foul. And the Giants never scored again. Philly won 24 to seven. Second down and six at the nine. Bradford with good protection, but then a short pass to Jordan Matthews, and he gets whacked by Thomas Davis. Shy of the first down by about two yards. One of the things that Sam Bradford wanted to not have happen in this game was to set up his guys on some crossing routes for big hits from these two inside linebackers. Keekley and Davis were early in the game, and already they're taking a beating in there. They split to Marco Murray wide to left. Bradford looked that way, comes back over the middle and hits Miles Austin. The longtime Dallas Cowboy out to the 36. Kurt Coleman makes the tackle. First down, Eagles. Sometimes, 22. sometimes you just get lost in these crosses because when you do, one defensive back tries to switch it. The other one goes to the other way as well. And all of a sudden now, you've got somebody running wide open. It's one of the big issues when you play against these Eagles, especially with that hurry up. You just make mental mistakes in the secondary. From the 36, Murray, and he gets met head on by Thomas Davis. Keekley is there. So you have the league rushing champion. It was a shot because Dallas tried to keep him, but it was a salary cap issue. Philly offered him, able to offer him more money. They'd gotten rid of LaShawn McCoy. So he comes along with Ryan Matthews from San Diego and Darren Strolls, of course, was there as well. So you have the three running backs, and now Matthews is in the game on second down and nine. Play action buys time, and that's Matthews, and Matthews for a big gainer down the sideline. And the one thing Philly and Bradford have been very good on this season is play action passing. Well, and Ryan Matthews is known for finishing runs. Watch the way he finishes this one coming out of the backfield. Had a big day against the Jets in week three, and he doesn't look to dodge anybody. He wants to run over whoever's in his way. Benet Benwickery, the recipient there. From the 43 now, here goes Matthews again to the outside. The Keekley and Harper say not very far. Tackles him in the... Philadelphia bench area gain of one it'll be second down and nine I tell you it is so hard for offensive linemen to catch up to these two inside linebackers you see him time after time and Lane Johnson there who was a quarterback and a tight end during his playing career trying to catch Keekley but his first step Keekley's first step is so fast you never get these guys cut off Keekley who missed three games with a concussion came back last week Second down and nine with five and a half to go in the quarter. And Bradford's going to get decked at the 50-yard line. K1 short. The defensive tackle. That's the second sack of Bradford tonight. K1 
Kwan Short, the defensive player of the week. A week ago against Seattle with a couple of sacks, and that one comes right back here. This is a young guy that they really feel like, yeah, Star Latulale has been the guy getting all the attention, but perhaps the better player this season has been that guy. And oh well, my goodness, that's Jason something Peters. The, the Eagles don't want to see. That's their their best lineman, the All Pro Jason Peters, who's down on the grass. All right, Jimmy Fallon this week with a good lineup of guests. Drew Barrymore will be there. David Spade as well. Steve Martin with the night show. Sorry, Jimmy Fallon this week right here on NBC. Well, Jason Peters, who has been such a great offensive tackle, 12th year in the league, several of those early in his career with Buffalo, came over here in 09 and see if we can see what happened here. Well, here he is right here. And it would be hard to describe how good a player this guy has been. I mean, clearly something gave out. He had a quad injury that bothered him in weeks four and five. Don't know if that has anything to do with it. But just so you have this in perspective a little bit, this guy has made the Pro Bowl seven times, all pro six times, is as athletic and as fast a guy playing on the offensive line as you will see. A lot of their screens, a lot of their ability to get out around the edge, and you can see his teammates really, really concerned about probably their best player on this football team. I don't compare many people to Anthony Munoz, who was my teammate in Cincinnati, one of the greatest players I ever saw, but this guy is pretty close. Mm. Anthony in the Hall of Fame, and I would imagine that Peters will be there one day as well. And for the Philadelphia Eagles, and of course we'll get a report, Michelle will as quickly as we can as to the nature of the injury. At least he's able to, for the moment, get to his feet before he gets assisted under the cart. His backup would be uh, Dennis Kelly. Jared Allen, the first one to go over, who was working against him on that play. Two great veteran players, a lot of respect there. But it really wasn't until this offensive line started getting healthy that this team started playing better and they started running the football. Nice round of applause here for the opposing fans. Eagles lose their best offensive linemen, so now this quick paced offense with a change up front. We'll see how they set it up here. Dennis Kelly looks as if he may go to right guard and Matt Tobin 64 goes into Peter's spot and he's got Davis facing him so it's third down and 16 and Bradford able to throw it incomplete to Marco Murray over the middle can't handle it fourth and 16. I'll tell you Sam Bradford was stepping up and out of the way of those two defensive ends coming flying around the edge he knew he was going to have some issues on the outside with Matt Tobin, the guard playing tackle. He hit that back foot and stepped up and got rid of that thing. I think it surprised DeMarco Murray. The left footed Donnie Jones to kick to Ginn. His first tough punt was 53 yards. Put some backspin on it. And Ginn will throw a catch it at the. 11 yard line. Let's take a look as Newton comes out. The offense. Cam Newton, Auburn University. Jonathan Stewart, the University of Oregon. Mike Tolbert, Douglas County High School. Ted Ginn Jr., The Irish State University. Corey Brown, The Ohio State University. Greg Olson, The U. Michael Orr, Ivy Toddy Land. Andrew Norwell, The Ohio State. Ryan Khalil, University of Southern California. Trey Turner, LSU. Mike Remmer, Oregon State. That offensive line really blending very nicely now. Center Khalil is as good as it gets at that position. You look at that offense, they run more than 
any team in the league, 49.5% of the time. Of course, a lot of that is their quarterback takes off from time to time, like 10 times a game. 50 rushes already this season for number one, Cam Newton. This time it's Stewart swinging to the outside. He gets turned in after a very short game. Let's take a look at the Philadelphia defense. Fletcher Cox, Mississippi State. Benny Logan, Louisiana State University. Cedric Thornton, Southern Arkansas University. Connor Barwin, Cincinnati. Jordan Hicks, Texas. Michael Kendricks, Cal. Brandon Graham, Michigan. Byron Maxwell, C.C. Blaney. Walter Thurman III, Oregon. Malcolm Jenkins, The Ohio State University. Nolan Carroll, Maryland. Eagles had to redo that secondary, which gave up so many big plays last year, so the only holdover is Jenkins. And second and nine. Swing to the outside, and again gets taken down a yard and a half shy of the first down by Nolan Carroll, setting up a third, and it's called a two. Yeah, one of the things you have to watch for the Philadelphia Eagles defensively tonight is they're going to have to dominate with their defensive line. Cedric Thornton and Benny Logan, Fletcher Cox, their best player on defense, are going to have to win up front because Carolina, when they get in these third and two kind of situations, almost impossible to stop because they have so many different options here with Cam Newton back there. He can do so many things running the football. Tough to stop. Pick your poison on defense. And for keeping himself, and Cam is able to lean for the first down up to the 22 yard line. When it comes to third down, and you got a guy like that in the backfield, take a look at that. 109 first down since 2011 when he came into the league, all the most in the league, and about two out of every three times he converts by rushing on third down. So fake it to Jonathan Stewart inside. This play was really very well played. Michael Kendricks coming back from that hamstring injury really had him. It was just the athleticism of Newton that won the day. Kendricks has missed three of the last four games. Newton deep downfield and wide open is his main man, Greg Olson. The tight end who gets free and takes the ball to midfield. The big hero last week, the winning touchdown at Seattle. Oh, just too easy here. You've got this is the oldest play in the book. You get somebody deep, somebody in between, and somebody short. Connor Barwin went up a little too quickly, and you can see I mean, most pitchers or quarterbacks right now, you've seen it a bunch. They got to get over onto that front foot to throw the ball, and he just sort of flicks it off the back foot, no problem. Makes Perfect it look throw. Very easy. 6'5 and 245 is Cam Newton. They run the read option again and give it to Jonathan Stewart. Jonathan missing his uh, old partner, D'Angelo Williams, the two guys here for many years, known as Double Trouble. And D'Angelo moved on to Pittsburgh, where he did yeoman work the first couple of weeks this season in place of the suspended Le'Veon Bell. Yeah, and uh, Chip Kelly has a pretty good scouting report on Jonathan Stewart, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. He was the offensive coordinator at Oregon when Stewart was there. And he said, I had a good idea. I just kept giving it to him. At about 1,700 yards that year, they work together. This is one of the most powerful human beings running with the football in the National Football League right now. 5'10", 235, and the quarterback is 6'5", and he's going to get sacked. Stewart tries to make the block, but can't, and that is Kendricks, who's able to slice in there to get the sack. Well, Michael Kendricks, welcome back, because they have desperately needed him and his athleticism. Jonathan Stewart, who he beat on that play, is the number one blocking halfback, not fullback, but halfback in the NFL. It only missed one block all year, and Michael Kendricks went right by him. But his hamstring has been a problem, and you hope that he's okay over there after that play. Third and 14. Looks coming. Newton in traffic in trouble and a little high. Wide open was Ted Ginn, Jr. And he missed him, fourth down. Well, how you called it. It was it was as easy as it could get but because of the body position of Cam Newton. I think he just thought he had to put a little more on it than he did. He had to dip back underneath. Watch him just sort of throw this dead to the right from that body position. And it just sailed on him. Brad Nortman is the punter. Graham almost got to him on the throw. Nortman sends it down to Darren Sproles who ran one back on that Monday night or last year for a touchdown. 
against Carolina. He's going to let it go for the moment and then fields it on a hop at the nine, but there's nowhere to run, nowhere to roam. Philly will take it at the 11 in the final minute of the first quarter with Carolina leading 7 to nothing. Jason Peters update. Here's Michelle. Well, Peters has a lower back issue. His return is questionable. He went back to the x-ray room to get his back looked at. I'll tell you, he was on his back on the cart, and it took a laborious effort to get him just to sit up and get off the cart. He walked into that x-ray room with a lot of help from two different members of the training staff, and he walked in there very slowly. We'll let you know when we have more, Al. All right, thank you, Michelle. Jason Peters is out, so that revamp offensive line trying to protect Bradford and give Murray some room and he picks up about seven as he goes through the middle 30 oh. seconds to play in the quarter yeah it, the Philadelphia Eagles right now are lucky to be in this game they have been outplayed here in the first quarter they're trying to maintain a fast pace but they are going to have to run the ball we saw when they were able to run it against the Giants the play action pass started working Sam Bradford needs the running game right now second and four and that's Ertz the tight end he takes it to the 24 yard line and that's going to take us to the second quarter. So after one in Charlotte it's Carolina seven Philadelphia nothing and Sunday night football back after these messages. Beautiful shot high above Charlotte, North Carolina. Aerial coverage tonight is being brought to you by Geico. Al Michaels, Chris Collinsworth, Michelle Tafoya, Sunday Night Football, Carolina undefeated at 5-0. Philly 3-3, three three, trying to make a three straight win. 7 to nothing. Panthers. First and 10. With Darren Sproles in the backfield from the 23-yard line. And he takes it up to the 30 yard line. Of course, the big news in the offseason, not only was Sean McCoy traded to Buffalo, but then they changed quarterbacks. Nick Foles going from Philadelphia to St. Louis and Sam Bradford coming the other way and talking to Sam last night. He said he'd heard about it. It was in the wind for a couple of weeks then it was on again, off again. He said, well, you talk about a 180 degree turn in terms of the town and the offense. I made it. And I throw that one into the bench. Blitz by Keekly forcing it. Well, if you make Sam Bradford move, you've got problems. And so right now, the plan is that they're going to come after him. And when Sam Bradford has to run either direction, he is going to have problems. He's just going to have to throw the football away. Luke Keekly, Thomas Davis, those two guys on blitzes are simply much, much faster than Sam Bradford. Keekly making only his third start, missing three games with a concussion. Sproles is in the backfield. It's third down and four. And play is stopped right here. So the timeout was taken by Philadelphia. It's a timeout taken by Chip. There's no flag on the play. Timeout, Philadelphia. So, Chris, we're talking about Bradford. We're talking about the trade. The other thing that Philadelphia had to consider, too, and he was the number one pick back in 2010. Were you getting damaged goods because he's missed the last year and a half, two surgeries, had a shoulder surgery in college? They had to think about that too. Yeah, and I think one of the things that's not very well understood is that basically Sam Bradford is on a one year deal. And if they're not happy with what he does this year, they're going to look around a little bit. And so why not? You're going to take a shot. You basically forego a second round draft pick, swap a couple other draft picks in there. But if Sam Bradford, who was the first overall player picked in the draft, could get healthy and get back to what he was, it's a great deal. If he doesn't, you're on a one year deal and you move on. And right now he's been in the uh, he's been in the mix master for the first five weeks because of all the interceptions. A tenth tonight. Third down and four. After that timeout, and then dancing around, then he finds Sproles, and Sproles gets free. Darts past Allen, picks up the first down. Well, of course, you got Darren Sproles. What are you going to do? You're going to put a defensive lineman on there, Jerry Allen. Who's been around. And I think Darren Sproles probably had a giggle when he got out there and he saw 
big Jared Allen, but how many times have we seen Sproles in the past down in New Orleans with Drew Brees and all of that making those kinds of plays? And before that, San Diego. Remember, it was Sproles who ended uh, Tony Dungy's coaching career. Dungy retiring after Sproles ran in a, uh, for a touchdown in an overtime game in 2008 in the playoffs. K1 Shorts halfway to the Pro Bowl already. This guy has simply been playing fantastic football here lately. He was brilliant a week ago against Seattle and has continued that outstanding play here early in this one. Great stuff. Second and 11. Bradford fires over the middle on the run. Catch made and that is Miles Austin to the 44. So you look at Bradford on third down. One out of every five dropbacks has resulted in a first down. That's a very low figure. Only four yards per pass. Extremely low. Lowest in the league. So he's had trouble converting in these situations. Let's see what happens here on third and three. He's going to try to run for it and he's going to come up a little bit short. Because Thomas Davis was right there. He turns to look at the marker. But they're going to spot it just shy of the first down. Now for the moment they're going to come up and at least line up to go for it. Murray is the back. But now the Eagles, you know the way they looked around, I wonder if some of the guys didn't think it was a first down. Timeout. Carolina, this is a 30 second timeout. The first charge. Actually Carolina calls the timeout. The reason you had a couple of the guys looking over toward the Carolina sideline. Now what do you do? Well it's obviously a huge play in the ball game and you could almost feel the frustration a little bit of Chip Kelly. He is an offensive minded guy. He wants to get something going. They can't afford to keep punting the football away. This offense is built around wearing defenses down, converting, 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 wearing down the pass rush, but they keep getting off the field. So I think Chip Kelly's seen enough and here at midfield is going to put a stake in the ground. Or at least line up to go for it. Maybe trying to draw him offside. Sproles is the back. And they do indeed run it on a roll by Bradford. And Bradford will get the first down. Darting between Harper and Addison. First down, Philadelphia. Well, great job by Roman Harper. They're trying to get this ball to Darren Sproles in the flat. He sort of grabs him. And now Sam Bradford with two repaired knee surgeries on the same leg is just going to have no choice on fourth down to put his head down and take a shot good for him that kind of wins over your teammates you make a few plays like that and harper and addison paid the price for the collision swim pass murray broke a tackle for the moment then taken down josh norman is right there he's turned into some corner for carolina Josh Norman, here's a guy in his fourth year, played at Coastal Carolina, a team that won yesterday. They were undefeated. Fifth round pick, and I know Pro Football Focus has him ranked number one. Oh my goodness, what a year he's had. Four interceptions already, two pick sixes. And Josh Norman's going to get a little lecture. He's on the chippy side for sure. We saw that in Seattle. Yeah, they may be trying to get him out of the game. I think you have the spotter upstairs. He took that from Murray, and the spotter may have called down and say, get him out of the game at least for a play. Must leave the field due to an injury. All right, so that's something new this year that you didn't see in the past. The spotter upstairs takes a look. He can buzz down and go, hey, wait a minute. Get that guy out of the game at least for one play. Mm -hmm. Athletic trainer, uh, checking he says all right they got to take a look at him on the sideline so he comes out then they've been wickery comes in in his place and on second and seven you got Murray finding the hole in the 36 but a flag is down at the 47 yard line holding offense number 62 10 yard penalty replay second down on the center Kelsey well, it is so frustrating trying to chase Luke Keekley all day. We talked about it earlier in the game. Watch Jason Kelsey, probably the most, or at least one of the most athletic centers there is in the game. Try to get out on Keekley. Keekley gets around him, gets his arm wrapped around Keekley, and there you go, a big run called back. 
So Norman went to the bench, but he's okay now. They've got him back in the game. They have a second down and 15. Travis Cooper coming in motion. Give the ball to Ryan Matthews. Yard shy of the 50. Charles Tillman. Good to see him back. We thought we saw Tillman's career come to an end last year on a Sunday night game in San Francisco with a torn biceps. Many years in Chicago, but now Peanut in his 13th season in the league. You ever see a guy that better at getting turnovers than that guy? Interceptions. Has a way of punching the ball out when runners are coming at him. Just brilliant doing that. Third and nine. Bradford fires and incomplete. Jordan Matthews can't hang on. Tillman with the coverage. Fourth down for Philly. Uh, you can't throw it better than that. I mean, Sam Bradford, that's tight coverage. He's got his top thread in there. Jordan Matthews and hits him right in the hands. Yeah. Can't do it better than that. The outside Matt Tobin filling in at left tackle for Jason Peters. Well done. And Donnie Jones sends it fluttering into the arms again at the 10 yard line. 10 14 left in the half with the Panthers up 7 to nothing. These two guys share a lot Bradford and Newton. Both with spectacular college careers. Each won the Heisman. Sam is a sophomore in 08. And then in his last year there, Cam at Auburn in 2010. Sam the number one pick in 10. Cam in 11. And each one offensive rookie of the year. So they can just trade trophy cases. A lot in common. Very different players. I don't think you're going to see too much of Sam Bradford running the read option. Matter of fact, he hasn't run one all year long, a designated run from the quarterback position. Now from the 10-yard line, pulling his way over the right guard spot is Jonathan Stewart. Picks up seven yards, second and three. One of the most impressive things we saw a week ago were these two guys right over on this side, Ryan Khalil and Trey Turner with these double team blocks inside. They were getting movement on the Giants, moving defensive linemen back into linebackers. And I think in this game, you're going to see much more of that, just straight power stuff. Stewart, the sixth carry of the night, is another first down. Good run out to the 28-yard line. And Jonathan Stewart already now with six carries for 66 yards. Yeah, one of the problems for Philadelphia defensively is it's tremendous against passing teams because they have almost all cornerbacks playing in the secondary. Malcolm Jenkins drafted as a corner, Walter Thurman a corner for uh, Seattle all those years. So four corners, but it makes it a little tougher if somebody starts running the football. Swing to the outside <laughs> and, and met head on by Jordan Hicks is Jonathan Stewart that Jordan Hicks was their third round pick out of Texas and because of the injuries he's been forced into the starting lineup and doing a heck of a job. How good has Jordan Hicks been back over here watch him you'll see Kendricks cut him back Jonathan Stewart back into him and then Hicks was right there. This is a guy that now leads this team in tackles has a sack has just been tremendous and leading the way on the defensive side. Very few rookies can organize and run a defense. He's been doing it great all year. Now Fozzie Whitaker is in the backfield for the first time. Stays in the block. And that's incomplete and almost picked. Greg Olson, the intended receiver, and Byron Maxwell upset with himself. Thought he should have had it. Third Byron down. Maxwell sat on that and was all over it. That is the kind of play that he needs to make. Has this huge contract, six years, 63 million, came out on opening night against Julio Jones, and Julio gave him more than a few lessons that night, gave a lot of other people lessons early in the year as well. But now they've sort of taken the spotlight off of Byron Maxwell. They've been giving him more help, just treating him like an ordinary corner. I think they sort of thought he might be one of those shutdown kind of guys, Darrell Rivas. Not quite yet. Four years in Seattle. A sidearm sling to Ginn, who makes the catch, but is short of the first down. So that makes it fourth down. And the punting gang comes in. Now you talked about it earlier. It really does look like the Giants game a week ago. They go down the field, opening drive, score a touchdown. And then Billy Davis's defense starts uh, turning the tide. There were four turnovers a week ago by Philly's offense, and no points off of those turnovers after allowing that opening drive score. Giants scored early, but not often. 24-7 was the final. Eagles. Here's Norton's kick. A wobbly boot. 
that angles out of bounds at around the 28 yard line. He do the play of the half. Carolina up by seven. And that is a week from tonight. Two undefeated teams going into November. November 1st, next Sunday night. Green Bay at Denver. Here's Bradford now, and that is batted away. That's batted by Josh Norman. He comes in on a blitz. You know, who would have thought? You know, when we saw the schedule, you've got Peyton Manning and Aaron Rodgers. Now you got the two teams that rank one and two and fewest points allowed. <laughs> no. You tell me. Well, I'll tell you, it's going to be some show out there next week. Aaron Rodgers going against that defense, something I'm really looking forward to seeing. Sunday night football, Green Bay and Denver. Second down and 10 after the Norman knockdown. And the handoff uh, will pick up about three yards. Matthews call it four, make it third down and six. Well, and now here goes the Eagles hurry up, which is always a great idea as long as you get that first first down. When you have drives, you go three and out in about 15 seconds, your defense starts looking at you funny. Blitz coming, Bradford able to avoid it, then throws, and it's Zach Ertz. That was Thomas Davis who came in, almost got his arm. First down, Philly. Thomas Davis right here coming on the blitz. Looked like he was going to get Bradford. I will say this about Sam Bradford tonight. We've seen him run the football, diving for a first down. He's stepping up in the pocket. You know, he didn't play very much football at all over the last two years. And it may be here at the halfway point in the season, we're starting to see him get a little better feel for the game again. And they got Lane Johnson, who was whistled earlier. Offense, number 65, five-yard penalty, still first down. Second foul on him tonight, four penalties against Philadelphia, none against Carolina in the game. And what happened to him is the same thing that happened to Jason Kelsey earlier. He had Luke Keekley trying to cut him off, and your brain starts going, I got to get out of here as fast as possible. First and 15, swing into the outside. Matthews around the corner. He goes, and the former San Diego Charger, number one pick, takes it all the way to the 40 yard line. Gain of 22 for Matthews. I just think that Peanut Tillman got fooled on this one. Here comes the motion, and here comes the back, and Tillman right out here, I think, got fooled by the fact that the guy in front of him went the other way and just allowed the edge to be had. Play action. Bradford rolls away. And now he's going to just sling it away. Nothing open. Maybe second down. It's not good when you're so far behind the line of scrimmage that you got to throw it as hard as you can to get it back <laughs> to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, that's part of the deal. You can be outside the pocket and throw it away, but you can't just fling it a couple of yards downfield. Well, the reason he had to scramble out of there is Josh Norman, who's having as good a year as anybody in the NFL, was all over his guy on that one. Now Bradford throws, and that is caught by Josh Huff to the 34. Pro Football Focus taking a look at Josh Norman ranking all of the cornerbacks in the league, and he would grade out as numero uno. Look at that. Only one TD this year allowed by him. Four interceptions, of which two have been run back by touchdowns. And the passer rating against him is minuscule. Third and four. And that's Huff, and Huff wants a flag, but there is none. The pass is incomplete. Kurt Coleman, former Eagle, covering. And now, just to put it in perspective for Josh Norman, if the opposing quarterbacks had taken the ball on every time they threw at him and threw it in the dirt, they would have had a higher quarterback rating than that. <laughs> that gives you some idea. Four interceptions, two return for touchdowns, a lot of fun. He was a young man we enjoyed having the conversation with yesterday. Full of enthusiasm, took a long time to get his opportunity. Uh-oh. Meanwhile, he, they have to get off the field in a hurry, and that compels a timeout. Teddy Williams was the 12th guy on the field, so a timeout has to be taken by Ron Rivera. Raiders Cup weekend. Beautiful Keeneland race course. 
Lexington, Kentucky is the site. Breeders' Cup World Championships in the classic American Pharaoh. Of course, won the Triple Crown. We'll try to make it a grand slam in the classic coming your way beginning Friday on NBC SN leading up to the big races on Saturday at 4 on NBC. Caleb Sturgis, they had to pick him up. Spent the last two years in Miami when Cody Parkey got hurt and is out for the year. And this is a 52-yard attempt by Sturgis that's good. And the Eagles were able to get on the board some um, 24 minutes plus into the game. That's checking with Michelle. Well, we told you earlier that left tackle Jason Peters went to the to the x-ray room to have his lower back examined. He remains questionable. Now, I watched him go into the x-ray room very slowly. I watched him come out of the x-ray room equally as slowly. He went back on a cart to the locker room from there. But unlike when he left the field, he was able to sit up on that cart. But still, I cannot tell you how slowly he is moving out. But at this point, questionable. Well, Michelle, it's interesting. He's not out. At least they're not listing him as out. Questionable. You know, hopefully it's not nearly as bad as it looked when he was down for a good couple of minutes. They have a bye week next week to the Eagles and don't play again until two weeks from tonight in Dallas on Sunday Night Football. I'm trying to think what would have to happen to a player for them to be listed as something less than questionable coming out of, you know, they just don't want to give up the information, obviously, right? Yeah, I mean, they don't know. and That's part of it, sure. A good indication would be if he comes back out in street clothes. Well, he's doubtful. Right. <laughs> but he's maybe. And that kick's going to go out of bounds before it crosses the goal line. That means the ball is going to come out to the 40. So Sturgis kick off out of bounds on the kicking team. If I rule the ball in place at the 40-yard line, first down. So there's a guy who kicks a 52-yard field goal, and then gives the team the receiving team the ball at the 40. Joy does not last long if you're a field goal kicker, does mm -hmm. it? Nope. Or so Cam Newton and the offense, the beneficiary of that. And you got Malcolm Jenkins, who spent five years with the Saints, came over last year. Walter Thurman is the other safety. So, again, that revamped secondary, they had to do it. And the only holdover from last year was Jenkins. Jonathan Stewart in the backfield with Newton. Blitz coming. And it's fired over the middle. And that's caught by... Greg Olson, what a trade that was that Carolina made in 2011, procuring him from the Chicago Bears. Yeah, Ron Rivera's first year here, and you could almost hear him say, we can get who? They needed a deep threat at the tight end position. Had Jeremy Shockey here. I think Shockey was shocked that mm -hmm. they were able to make that deal. And looking back on it now, one of the real steals of the past half decade. And Bears fans were saying, you traded who? Yeah, Mike March was there. You didn't need the tight end, all that stuff. And there's a little flip to Ginn. And Ginn around the corner on a little trickery and deceit. And he will take it all the way to about the 10. Greg Olson threw a nice block to spring him. So a little fake handoff, a little flip. And then the end around on a huge gain, 44 yards to the seven. How many centers have you ever seen? that can get downfield in front of a guy like Ted Ginn and make the key block. Cuts off Nolan Carroll, the corner down the field, and allows Ted Ginn to have the entire boundary to himself. Some athlete. There's Greg Olson out in front as well. First and goal after the 44-yard romp. And Newton's going to take another timeout, and that's going to be their final one of the... Time first out, half. It's a 30 second timeout. It's a third and final timeout of the half. We can tell you that Sunday Night Football being brought to you by Chevrolet. Use hashtag I drive for to support the fight. By Microsoft Surface, the official tablet of the NFL. By Sears, house experts for homeowners. And by Geico, 15 minutes to save you 15%. On car insurance. As Tuesday, and Josh Norman, Roman Harper, Andrew Norwell among the group of Panthers at the nearby Troutman Elementary to donate a Play 60 grant. 
Jerry Richardson is the owner of the team. He founded the team, which came into the National Football League in 1995. Pretty good player himself. Yes, he played in that uh, that famed Giants Colts championship game. With the swing to the outside goes Jonathan Stewart. Taken down behind the line of scrimmage. Connor Barwin and Maxwell are there, second down and goal. Yeah, nice job by Byron Maxwell coming up. The goal of this offense is to get their big back, Jonathan Stewart, and I mean he is a hammer. <laughs> get on the field next to him. He is a wide body, and they didn't think the corners could come up and make those tackles. That time Byron Maxwell did. Well, Newton gets shoved down, and that elicits that response from the crowd. Oh, man, Academy Award time. Look yeah. at him. He was loving right. that. It would take a bulldozer to knock him over like that. Encroachment. Defense, number 96. The throws half the distance to goal. Second down. It's the nose tackle Benny Logan. You know, it's interesting. Wouldn't have made that big a difference here. I was wondering if he were going to get a personal foul as well. Yes, he's off sides. But he also did take a little shot at Cam. Maybe if Cam hadn't quite <laughs> overacted, he might have got, or at least not smiled when he got up from overacting. So now it's second down and goal. Hey, here we go. Hey, great, great R. Great R. Great R. Ooh, now they got movement again. Encroachment. Defense, number 96. Okay, half the goal, still second half. Don't see that very often. That's Benny Logan again. Well, he only has to look about six inches to find the ball. It's right, it's right underneath him here. And it's two times in a row. He's going to get fooled with a hard count. And really, Cam doesn't even give it the, you know, head bob or any of the things with his arms. He just got him with the hard snap count. And so far, this drive has been pretty easy from the five-yard line in. From the eight to the four to the two. And that kickoff out of bounds is weighing a little larger right now, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Tolbert is the back. Newton will keep it. And Cam reaches across for the touchdown. The old read option, and for Cam Newton. Gutsy play. He's going to reach this ball over the goal line, but I guess when you have hands like this, you just do whatever you got to do. Clearly cross the plane. Touchdown. Brilliant again. I tell you, Cam Newton's been doing that read option play for a long, long time. That was a variation on it. Had Greg Olson out blocking the guy that they typically read. That guy is a monster, and he did it with mm -hmm. his brain that time as well with those hard counts. And that big right hand with that solid grasp. You so often you'll see something like that and the ball gets knocked loose. Graham Gano for the extra point. Brad Norton holding. And with 333 remaining in the opening half. Carolina 14. Philadelphia 3 on Sunday Night Football. With NFL Mobile, you can watch local and primetime NFL games live on your smartphone. Learn more at NFL.com slash mobile. Once known as Downtown Charlotte, changed it years ago to Uptown Charlotte. Why not? Why not? Uptown girl. Had a little uptown funk before. There you go. Boy, it's been fun to watch these two guys. It doesn't matter which tape you put on. It is always the same. Thomas Davis exploding into the receiver earlier in the game. Comes right back against DeMarco Murray. And then Luke Keekley. You can't get to him. Offensive linemen simply cannot cut him off. It is so frustrating to play against these two linebackers. And the defensive line in front of them. And these two linebackers will tell you right away when you first talk to them. 
our defensive linemen hold, grab, stab, <laughs> whatever they got to do to keep us clean so we can run sideline to sideline. That's a big key. Two yard gain, DeMarco Murray. Bradford is 10 out of 18. Murray, meanwhile, has carried seven times for 33 yards tonight, about four and a half per tote. Second down eight. That's Murray again. He goes nowhere. That time it's K1 short. Big number 99. Third year guy out of Purdue. Making it third and seven. You know, there are some guys that the light just goes on a little bit later. And this guy now, he was sort of the other guy when Star Latulale was picked. And now K1 Short, who has great feet, you see him work his hands brilliantly, has simply dominated this first half. Third and seven, which means Sproles comes into the game next to Bradford. And then they flip it to him, and Sproles with a spin move, but uh-uh-uh, cannot get away from Thomas Davis, who's been doing that for the better part of 11 seasons. Uh, he's absolutely brilliant. Remember, he was a safety in college coming out. And one of the reasons he was picked here was they needed somebody to spy on Mike Vick. And you can see in the open field who in the world can tackle a spin move by Darren Sproles like that. Well, that guy can. And he's been doing it consistently since he's gotten in the league. Takes us to the two-minute warning. Carolina will get the ball back, leading by 11 on Sunday night. So to halftime coming up, the Patriots win again, beat the Jets, go to 6-0. and Cowboys lose again. They can't wait for Romo to get back. Four straight losses. And Bob will weigh in on Aaron Rodgers and Peyton Manning and the two unbeaten on Sunday night next week. Green Bay and Denver. And that punt will roll out of bounds at the 29-yard line. And with 150 left and no timeout, Central Carolina will take over when we come back. Cam Newton has been tremendous tonight. We have seen he doesn't need to step into these throws very hard at all. It's all about the torque in his hips and getting it out. A little bit of a non-traditional, slightly three quarters, but watch his hips on these throws. Golf pros will tell you, you got to be able to open up, snap open those hips. The power comes from that. You'll see it here as well. Just the snap of the hips and the ball comes out hard. He has done a tremendous job in this first half, both throwing and running. Only had to throw it eight times. They've only run 21 plays. And that's caught on a slant, and that's a first down. Ginn Jr. Clock will run down. They don't have a timeout. The Panthers have to navigate without a T.O. Something about Ted Ginn, when he gets to Carolina, he just gets better. Came and went. Back again. And Newton. The throw to the sideline. And the catch is not made. The line just coming down. Now they're going to confer here as to whether he made the grab in bounds or not. That's Corey Brown new. Yeah, I think that Philly Brown, Corey Brown, whatever you want to call him, I think he steps out and then is the first. There he is. He's yep. out of bounds. Good call by the officials. There you go. Stepped out of bounds and did not reestablish in bounds. Incomplete pass. And that makes it second down and ten. Carolina with the ball at the end of the half. And he will get the ball to start the second half. Official stoppage for whatever reason. Maybe Rolstad will tell us in a second. Or maybe he won't. To he will. Timer, please reset the game clock to one minute, 19 seconds. Should have known. Mm. Had a couple of those issues, haven't we? Yes, we have. We had a couple, a lot of issues. Still working on catch, no catch. Is under review. 
Under review, I mean, it was pretty simple. He I was out so. and he was in. Did he reestablish, yeah, right? Did he? Reviewing it right now, if he comes back in and reestablishes himself, in this case, Corey Brown, which they said he hadn't done at first, take a look. That's clearly out. Does he get the foot down, the back foot? But if he does, that's an illegal catch, right? And a five-yard penalty. So I think it was actually Philadelphia, believe it or not, who was pushing for the challenge there. Oh, boy. Or the review. Right. Yeah, and challenge now. So the ruling is an incomplete pass. If he reestablished and made the catch, it's a five-yard penalty. And that's what the... Discussion is about. There are a few discussions these days. You know, I, I, I'm for simplification. I'm a simple guy. I just like to see him make it a little easier. If it goes out of bounds, it's incomplete. Why not? After review, the runner stepped out of bounds. The, the receiver stepped out of bounds. Reestablished back in bounds and was the first to touch the deck. However, that is illegal touching or pass. That is a five-yard penalty, which will be enforced. <laughs> First down and 15 at the 37-yard line. So the crowd yeah. cheers. They think they've got. They picked up the the completed right. pass. They go, yeah. So he stepped back down. He reestablished, and so it's a five-yard penalty on you. Boo! Yeah, they didn't wait for the whole thing. <laughs> I love it. Nobody knows. As the one-time New York Giants number one draft choice, Lee Grosscup, once said, "Uncomplicate your life." <laughs> I don't know. I think I think if you get two feet down and you fall out of bounds in the end zone or on the sideline, completed pass, you have control. I'm with you. If you step out of bounds, come back in, it's incomplete. So it's first down and 15 now after the penalty. Yep. A minute and 19, the ball is at the 37. Brown in motion. And Newton fires incomplete over the middle. Try to get it into the tight end, Greg Olson, and uh, Cam hit his hand. I don't know how Cam Newton held on to that ball. We saw him reach out with one hand on the goal line. Didn't fumble it there. Watch this one. It is going to get a hand on the football. I think that was Fletcher Cox. Got a hand on it, knocks his hand off the ball, but manages to hold on and all in one motion still make the throw. It looked like he might have hit his hand on Andrew Norwell's helmet. His left guard shakes it off in second and 15. Eagles run a stunt up front, forcing Newton out. And then the catch is wow. made somehow. Malcolm Jenkins somehow comes up with it. Jenkins. Jenkins steals it away at the boundary. Wow. This coverage was like this all over the field. Malcolm Jenkins could not be happier with what is happening with him. He stayed right on, I think that was Fozzie Whitaker right. there, to make that interception. It looked like he was going to wheel up the boundary. Malcolm Jenkins, a former cornerback, back there playing safety. These safeties for Philadelphia play unlike any I really have seen in the NFL this year. They have two guys, Jenkins and Thurman, who are cornerbacks. And so when they get on tight ends or they get on tough running backs, they have no issues whatsoever. They're better cover guys than the running backs are receivers. So they review it. Jenkins stayed in bounds. You saw Whitaker after the play. Whitaker thought he caught the ball at one point. <laughs> That's exactly what Philadelphia needed at the end of this half here from the 39-yard line, a short pass caught by Jordan Matthews. Philly has two timeouts. Jordan Matthews is such an important part of this team in the slot and making these plays, and he cannot get away from these two inside linebackers. Second and seven. Blitz coming, and the pass is overthrown, but there's a flag. Jordan Matthews covered by Benet Ben Wickery. And he's contending, he's been wickery that the pass was not catchable. Defense, defense number 25. The ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Well, pretty easy call, really. You're going to see Ben Wickery right here. 
Doesn't get his head around. He's going to put his hands on Jordan Matthews. Didn't need to do it. Trying to say it's uncatchable. It was uncatchable because he pushed him. Now first down of the 23, 42 seconds and two timeouts for Philly. Cracker protected well, but then it is tipped and almost intercepted off the tip. K1 short tipped it and Coney Ely almost picked it off. Second down. Ely right working over Lane Johnson on the outside here. But Jordan Matthews was wide open. Sam Bradford just couldn't get them over Coney Ely's hand. And it almost came up with the interception. Bradford in the pocket fires. That'll be a first down 11 yard line. Zach Ertz makes the catch and Philadelphia will take a timeout with 28 ticks. And now this is when you start to see this Eagles offense be effective. When defensive linemen get worn out, there's no pressure now. When Sam Bradford can stand back there and let some of these routes develop down the field, now he's not having to just dump the ball and get it away. Go back to the interception here. Huge because it's an 11-point game. Carolina trying to move down the field. And there was Newton throwing and... Yeah, it wasn't a bad decision. You no. think you're going to throw it to back shoulder right? That guy is going to go swing up the field. No way that Jenkins is going to be able to turn and make that play. Whitaker ready to Just pull did. it into his chest. Jenkins had other ideas. 28 seconds, the ball at the 11, first and 10. Bradford and Sproles drops it to the outside, covered there by the linebacker Thomas Davis. 22 seconds and second and 10. He dropped that one. Do it again. Because you got exactly what you want. You have your quickest guy, Darren Sproles, one on one with a great linebacker. I'm not saying he's not a great player, Thomas Davis, but he has to cover an inside cut and an outside cut. If they're going to stay in that defense, do it again. Sproles stays in the backfield on second down and 10. Bradford, and it's Jordan Matthews. He's out of bounds, though. Jordan Matthews could not get both feet down. Third down. He got one. He just couldn't slam that other toe in the ground. No such thing as a force out now. Remember that part of it. One foot down. Just could not get that other foot on the ground. No knee, shin, nope. nothing else. Good call by the officials. And they Ben Wickery, one of the great names in the history of the NFL. Sounds like a pastry at Cafe Dumont. Pushed him out of bounds. Here's Bradford to the end zone. Bat it away. Yes, sir. Josh Norman. Yes, sir. Well, they're going to hold him to a field goal attempt. He has just done that all season long. I haven't seen a hotter football player than Josh Norman. They're going to swing the tight end up the boundary and just a simple little cover two. Norman lays out and gets a hand on that ball that looked the entire way like it was going to be a touchdown. What a year that young man is having. 29-yard attempt for Caleb Sturgis. And that will make it a one-possession gain at the half. Four seconds. Remaining is now 14 to 6. Just going to swing that tight end up the boundary. You'll see him go out. A zone defense. Norman sees exactly what's going on. Has his eyes back on Bradford. And just reacts to the football. It is no fluke. Every tape shows the same exact thing. That guy making plays. What do you tell us about uh, Coastal Carolina? He went there. He had to go as a walk-on. And... You know, he finally got the start and he kept hoping they were going to offer him a scholarship and they wouldn't offer him a scholarship. So one day, he pulled out his University of Georgia pants and he said, <laughs> had some shorts from a recruiting trip there. And he said, well, you know, if I'm going to walk on, I might as well walk on at Georgia. What the heck? Next day, he had a scholarship. Yeah, and the great thing about him here is that he was schooled by Steve Smith, who was here for a couple of years when Norman came to Carolina. So. 
going up against one of the all-time greats in practice every day. Yeah, and he said, I don't care how many 10,000 yards you got. I'm, co I'm coming after you. And then it actually, when he finally got a chance to play the nickelback, one game against Steve Smith, Steve Smith was lighting him up the first half, not against him. So they put Norman over there in the second half, did a great job. He's been starting ever since. As the crown ball, a knee will be taken at the 29-yard line with one second on the clock and one kneel down and Carolina is going to get the the ball when we start the second half so the yardage about even Phillies run almost twice as many plays as Carolina well, they do go into the half, though, with one thing. They finally wore down that defense a little bit. You can see if they can just convert a couple of first downs, that offense starts having an effect on the defense. Halftime. 14 to 6. Panthers get the ball to start the third quarter. Coming up next, the Toyota halftime. Right after these messages from your NBC station. Tonight's first half highlights are brought to you by the Chevy Silverado. Clover gets the handoff and into the end zone he goes. Good luck if you're Philadelphia. And Bradford's going to get decked at the 50 yard line. Haywan short. Newton will keep it and reaches across for the touchdown. That guy is a monster. Chevy Silverado, high strength steel for high strength dependability. And back we come to Charlotte, North Carolina. Now Michaels, Chris Collins, we're in the show DeFoya on Sunday Night Football. Eight point differential. Sam Bradford had an early pick overall. 25 attempts for 103 yards. Cam Newton has thrown only 11 times, has two interceptions. Had three carries for four, including the touchdown. The Eagles have run. 44 plays before less than four yards per play. Meanwhile, Carolina has 118 rush yards, and that's 9.1 yards per carry. Some of the figures as we head into the third quarter with Sturgis to kick off, and Fozzie Whitaker back to receive. Second half is underway, and then Whitaker wanted to come out with it. Drops it, takes a knee, start at the 20. You hear so much about the read option, and Cam Newton's been great at it so far. Always somebody unblocked. In this case, it is Brandon Graham on the outside. You see Greg Olson blocking to the inside. This time, Greg Olson goes out to get Brandon Graham, so they're going to read the inside guy. He comes flying in for the running back. Like Tolbert, I believe that is, and there goes Cam Newton for the touchdown. Does it really matter? You can't be right because there's always one unblocked guy, and whatever that guy does, Cam Newton's going to do the other, either keep it or hand it off. On first down, off play action, the pass to the outside, and that will result in a 15-yard pickup by Ted Ginn Jr. First down, here's Michelle. Well, Ron Rivera told me at halftime that he feels like his team should be dominating the game, but they have missed opportunities. He said, we've got to go grab a hold of this game. Chip Kelly was also blunt, saying, we have just shot ourselves in the foot. we got to stop doing it with these drops and penalties. If we can hold onto the ball, we'll be fine. And left hand tackle Jason Peters, who had that low back issue, is out with back spasms. Right, thank you, Michelle. Perfect analysis, I thought, by both coaches. Stewart taken down for a loss of one. I agree. Watch how long Cam Newton keeps this ball in the belly of Jonathan Stewart. He's reading this the whole time. Look at him. He's looking at that end. He's trying to decide, trying to decide, trying to decide. They, and now, okay, give it to him. Now, it didn't work out that time, but that's the kind of thought process that goes into that play. Over the middle, that's caught, and that's going to be a first down. Jericho Cotchery makes his first catch of the night. Been around a long time, several years with the Jets, 12th year in the league. 
Yeah, and Jericho Cotri not only picked up that first down, but deserved credit for the first first down as well on the quick pass to Ted Ginn. It was Cotri who made the big block. Panthers going hurry up to start the third quarter from the 47. Here we go. Hey, even quicker. Hey, son. Even quicker. He's a big Madden player. He says, I love getting to the line of scrimmage and making the call. Bows up a pass again to Ted Ginn. First down to the 32. He's been rejuvenated, Ted Ginn. It's any time that he comes here. I'm telling you, when he somewhere else, he's okay. He does fine, but when he comes to Carolina, he does his best work. Reverses, kick returns. That is a great catch. That ball was had a little hum baby on it. Five grabs tonight for him. Blitz coming. Boy, they did a nice job picking that up, and then it's caught. It's caught by Olson, and he's out of bounds at the six-yard line. And shaken up on the play is Nolan Carroll. You are hurting if you send two guys on a blitz and they don't get there. And that time, Jonathan Stewart, the best blocking halfback around, was able to pick it up, and then it was just the speed of Olsen. There just are not many tight ends in the league that run 4-5, and he surprises safeties all the time. And Carroll hurt, thus we have the timeout for the injury grasping his left hand and they'll take him back to the bench first and goal Carroll back on the bench he was flexing his left hand has to come out at least for one play EJ Biggers comes in number 38 at the right corner where they go to work on him the new entrant into the game instead they hand the ball off and Charging forward to the two-yard line goes Mike Tolbert to make it second down to goal. And the Eagles just not used to this. Here comes Carroll back on, but they've allowed only one rushing touchdown all season long and two already tonight. And Cam Newton and the Panthers looking to make it three. Boy, it is, there is nothing better than when you can hand the ball off inside the five-yard line and score touchdowns. Second down and goal, the ball hey, fire, at the fire, two. Fire, fire. Again, bottom of the screen working one-on-one -on -one with Carroll. Play action. Tolbert. And fighting his way into the end zone, breaking three tackles. Got bumped. Jenkins couldn't tackle him. Off he goes, bowling his way in. That's a great play by Tolbert, but that's really bad by the Philadelphia Eagles. It's just bad. They've got him. Jenkins right here. You got him. All right, Byron Maxwell, just get him out of bounds. That guy weighs 260 pounds. You're the best athlete out there. Can't even put a finger on him? Hmm. Tries to shoulder him down. Gets away there, gets away there. But Mike Tolbert, a man that size, can catch the ball, he runs routes, he blocks, he can play tailback. He is really something special, and he has been for a long time. And Jenkins takes the blame himself. You can see him basically seeing me bad. Should have had him. Instead, they go 80 yards, seven plays in a little over three minutes to start the second half. And Graham Gano to tack on the extra point. Early third, and the Carolina Panthers trying to go to 6 and 0, oh, lead 21 to 6. Sunday Night Football being brought to you by Southwest Transparency Low Fairs. Nothing to hide by Bose. Music deserves Bose. By the 2016 Lexus LS and new LX. Polish meets purposeful and by Farmers Insurance Get Smarter at Farmers.com. It's Mountain Creek High School. They beat Ale Brown on Friday night. Ryan Jones caught three touchdowns and one of the guys who played for that team, Thaddeus Moss, who's the son of Randy Moss, and some of the Mallard Creek guys are there taking in Sunday night football. Nice call, guys. Nice call. From the 20 now, the Philadelphia offense. If you follow the NFL, you know how 
quick. They run plays. 24 seconds and 13, 22 7. Last year, this year only the Texans have run plays faster. And the percentage of drives with the first down, they were third, then tenth last year. Now they're 17. Part of the problem, obviously, is you know, the worst thing in the world is to go three and out after a long drive by the other team, and your defense obviously right back out there. So now down by 15. This drive begins with Bradford jostled, getting away, but only for a gain of two. Benet Ben Wickery is the guy who put the pressure on. It'll be second down and eight. Good job with the coverage down the field. There's our guy Josh Norman. He's in perfect position against their best, Jordan Matthews. Linebackers inside doing a good job along with Roman Harper. No snap is able to hand it off though. It's only a one yard gain by DeMarco Murray. Third down. Chris Philadelphia, very interesting. They, all of the assistant coaches get involved in the play calling. Yeah, well they put the call into the quarterback, but then one of the assistant coaches calls it into each different position group. So far those play calls haven't been all that great. They need first downs. No. Can't keep punting it after going three and out. And the coaches can change personnel. And that's caught, and that's a first down after the 35-yard line. Zach Ertz, the tight end. First down. There it is again, the, the coach is on the sideline. Yep, well coordinated, and it works great when you get it going. But Al, I always sort of thought, I ran the no huddle a bit with Cincinnati and Sam White, that the over-under was kind of two. You needed two first downs to really get the momentum of a drive and the no huddle going. There's one. They need one more like they did at the end of the half where they got them worn down a bit. All right, already down by 15. They need a bunch. Ooh, and getting slammed. There is Davis. He's just in on everything. It's DeMarco Murray gets taken down after a four-yard pickup. Brent Selleck's a good blocker, but Thomas Davis just throws it to the side. I mean, just basically throws him away, and he gets lost sometimes in the shadow of Luke Keekley. I'm telling you right now, he should not. This guy can absolutely fly. Now, Keekley, well-deserved, defensive player of the year, all that kind of stuff, but that is a good man right there. Walter Payton, man of the year award winner. He is a, he's a good one. Second and seven, and now cutting it back is Matthews. And Matthews into Carolina territory. Out in front. Touchdown, Philadelphia. Ryan Matthews goes 63 yards. And that's exactly what the doctor ordered for Philadelphia. This time, the speed worked against them. Ryan Matthews, we've been kind of waiting to see this all night. Keekley is going to overrun it just a bit. And Matthews comes back out the other way. Anytime you have that kind of speed at linebacker, you have to try and go back door, cut it back behind them occasionally, run some reverses. And I tell you what, Ryan Matthews has had a good year. When they gave him a real chance earlier against the Jets, he responded over 100 yards. Might want to give him a few more tries. Longest run of his career started with San Diego after the 2010 draft Caleb Sturgis kicks the extra point and with nine and a half to go he's seen a score here in the third quarter 21-13 for the NASCAR playoffs is on NBC SN eliminator round of eight begins at Martinsville Speedway next Sunday morning 11 Eastern time Joey Logano won his third straight race today at Talladega field of eight set for the eliminator round top finisher among those eight at each of the next three races earns a spot in the championship in Miami. So it's that time of year. Bring you that promo from NASCAR country. Absolutely. And there are your eight. Chance to win it all. So out of the next three races, four guys will move to the essentially the Super Bowl, right? In Miami. And then whoever finishes the top out of those four wins it all. Do I have that right? I think you got it. You, you right. got it. You got it. But you won't see Kale Yarborough or Richard Petty. I love Richard there. Petty. Man. Okay. All right, from the 20-yard line, it's Tolbert who moves into the slot. Fake to him. Hendricks chases him down passes. 
dropped at the 20 yard line so simply an incomplete pass second down and 10 back to the TD we go yeah watch Alan Barber here he's going to cut off Keekley and I think Keekley is going to think I got to outrun that guy and get him going and then all of a sudden here we go out the back door with this thing and Keekley is so good at getting over top of those blocks and that time Barber hustled just enough to get in front of him and I think it made Luke Keekley overreact just a bit there's Deuce Staley who's the running backs coach former Eagles star. He's a guy, Chip Kelly says, hey, he rotates the backs. He sends in whoever he feels of the three that should be in there. Jonathan Stewart takes the ball to the 25. It'll be third and five next. I'll tell you, it has been a battle going inside here in this game. Trey Turner and Ryan Khalil going up against, I think that was your guy, Benny Logan, who wants to be a goalie for the L.A. Kings. I thought you were going to jump out of your chair when you heard that one. That was his dream. He, he couldn't play football. He said, I want to be a goalie for the Los Angeles Kings. I said, what? He grew up in Louisiana. He said, I just love him. Third and five. And that's a little high, and that is deflected, picked off by Aaron Maxwell. And Maxwell getting some blocking. Tackled finally by Olsen at the 18-yard line on a pass intended for Devin Funchess, the rookie from Michigan. So another huge turnover. Oh, boy, they had it wide open. Funchess is going to break in on the post, and he's just wide open. There was a little natural pick, and Cam just tried to drill it in there instead of just taking it. Bounces up in the air, and somehow Maxwell, after getting picked off in the coverage ends up with an interception. Maybe that's the break he needed to get him going. We have seen some strange interceptions here in this mm -hmm. ball game. That's three picks of Newton tonight. And the Eagles have the ball at the 18 yard line. Well, I tell you those 44 plays in the first half are like body punches in a fight, right? They don't start showing up until late in the second half. You just wonder how fresh will this Carolina defense be as we go down the stretch. The yeah, average team runs around 70 plays a game. You run 44 and a half, you're on an 88 pace. So that does take its toll on the defense at some point. DeMarco Murray stopped at the line of scrimmage second down. I think that DeMarco Murray had a little bit of a chance there. They had a great double team inside right here. If he makes that cut, and then just, oh, maybe just the fact that Mario Addison was coming off the edge, not sure. Second and 10. There's a little toss going to Brent Selleck. He's bumped out at the 11-yard line by Thomas Davis. And that will make it third down and four. Yeah, and that is Philadelphia's version of the read option. When your quarterback doesn't run, then the read ends up being a pass. And that's what that play was. Third and four. Bradford, good time, and then throws, and that'll be caught for a first down. Selleck again. They'll spot the ball at the seven yard line, first down and goal. And Mario Addison is shaken up. Well, there's the pass rush, and we talked about it those body blows, right? All of a sudden, you, you get more than two first downs in a drive, and you, that fatigue starts to show up. And that's not going to help either. They already lost Dwan Edwards up front. Mm. Addison walked off under his own power. You can see Philadelphia, big disparity in plays run. This will be their 53rd in two and a half quarters. We're halfway through the third. It's first down and goal. DeMarco Murray in the backfield with Bradford. Takes it. Falls forward to the seven. Second down and goal. Well, I think that's those two big defensive tackles in there one more time. I get the feeling, boy, there goes Addison. And that really hurts. I, you know, we talk about the pace and the number of plays, Al, and all that kind of stuff. But now you start adding an injury or two into that, and the rotation gets lessened. It's a long last. 21 and 22 minutes or so. Second and goal. Murray sweeping left. They 
taken down by Luke Kinkley. 70,000 champion Luke. Third and goal. As soon as Keekley reads it, man, you are in trouble because he's just going to drift, 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 see if you're going to cut back, play it inside out, make that blocker miss, just sidestep right over the top of him, and bang. Now you got a big play. Well, you eliminate the quarterback run here in this situation. It's not Sam Bradford. Haven't heard from Riley Cooper much. Panthers nearly jumped. Bradford fires high. Deflected and incomplete. Juggled by Josh Huff. Couldn't haul it in. Keekley back there covering to hold him to a field goal attempt. And again, the loop chant. He's everywhere. Yeah, it looked like he had a chance. Watch Keekley turn and make a play on the ball. At least force a high throw here. And then Huff unable to hold on to it. We've seen Keekley make plays in the running game all night, but it's probably his ability and coverage that sets him apart and makes him one of the best in defensive player of the year one year. 24-yard attempt by Sturgis. And that will make it a five-point game. Carolina leading 21-16 with 5.48 left in the third on Sunday Night Football. Tomorrow and Tuesday, the voice knockouts begin. Rihanna will join the team to advise the artists. The voice will new tomorrow and Tuesday, right where your dial is set on NBC. And the kickoff here at the foot of Sturgis, taken by Fozzie Whitaker. And he'll bring it back to the 25. You know, a lot of people thought that it was a purge in Philadelphia that Chip Kelly wanted to get rid of a lot of guys. He said, hey, Buffalo called us, first of all, about the McCoy trade and all of that. And then it was funny. We were talking to him last night. He said, it's simple. It's all about the salary cap these days. You have $143 million. You have to divide it 53 ways. Yeah, and you kind of go down the list of players, basically, you know, they let the Sean McCoy go, and they got three running backs for the same price that he was going to be worth to this football team. And, you know, you go right down the list. A lot of veteran players had very high salary cap numbers. I'll go through some of them here. And it was really about the money. 25-yard line. And look at that run by Jonathan Stewart. Year after year after year, that type of run turns his back to the tacklers. Second down. The Stars over the past couple of years, Deshaun Jackson gone. McCoy, of course, to Buffalo. Falls in the trade for Bradford. Macklin goes to join Andy Reid. And Evan Mathis was let go, and he's with the Broncos right now. Some big-name guys. Second and one. And this is Stewart. So with Jeff Lurie, the longtime owner of the team, he's owned the Eagles for about two decades now. He gave all of the power to Chip Kelly. But I talked to him before the game, and he was talking about, you know, I waited a couple of years before I gave Andy Reid all of the power. And Reid had all the power all those years he was there in terms of personnel. And he said, I waited the same time. And Chip, he won 10 games in each of the first two years, and he deserved it. Yeah, and you go down the list, and everybody thinks it was such a crazy deal of Sean McCoy for Ball Kiko Alonso. Offense, number 74, five-yard penalty, first down. But when you look at the numbers, it was $11.9 million off the cap, and Alonzo cost them $700,000. So they wanted to improve on defense. They did that. They saved some money. The older guys, they were looking to improve the defense. So Trent Cole was due $9 million. Evan Mathis wanted $8 million. Jeremy Macklin, they offered $11 million. Kansas City paid him $13 million. Harriman's was due 5.5. So they got rid of some of those big numbers. They spent it on the defensive side. They've been better on defense. And it was really about the cash, which it always is. I mean, everybody knows that, right? It's all about the money. To the outside goes Tolbert. And right in the corner he goes. Mike Tolbert with another good run on a first and 15, brushing himself off. The other thing Kelly was talking about, which was amazing when you think about it, you know, McCoy cost them more 
than the three guys that he has run out of the backfield right now, Murray, Sproles, and Matthews, collectively, at yeah. least this year on the catch. And you saw what Matthews did on the long touchdown. Murray was the defending rushing champion. And we all know about Darren Sproles and his abilities, three very unique kind of individuals. So that was the plan. Second and four. Busting his way for a first down is Jonathan Stewart. So we asked Kelly last night if he was good in math in school. He said, it doesn't have to be. It's simple. 143 divided by 53. Comes out to about 2.7 million a player. But of course, it's how you spend it. Yeah, but didn't change things. Boy, he was accused of a lot of things, wasn't he? Yes, he was. Yeah, I won't go into all of them, mm -hmm. but some of them you go, uh, come on now. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you don't get to where he is with uh, some of the issues that was raised. From the 48. This is Jonathan Stewart. Picks up four, gets to the 48-yard line. So good beginning to this drive for the Panthers, who watched the 15-point lead get chopped down to five on those last two Philadelphia drives. Yeah, I, I really enjoy watching just power football like this. You know, Jonathan Stewart, Walter Payton was his all-time favorite. He read a book on him. I can tell you, Walter Payton, our head coach, Forrest Gregg, one time, made us all come in a room and watch him play. They had a cut-up of just Walter Payton, one of the most incredible football players I've ever seen. And to the 45-yard line, doing it all on the ground, the running team in the league. Stewart now closing in on 100 yards. Philly has not given up 100 yards to any individual rusher in 18 games over a year. There it is. Now this has been a really good drive though as fast as Philadelphia wants to go. Carolina on the other side would rather play methodically and give their defense a very important rest at this point. Third down four under two minutes to go in the third. And Newton's under pressure. Flag is thrown. And Cam will just flip that one into the bench. That's normally where holding would be called. We'll wait for the call from Rolstad. Now it looked like maybe the tight end got rolled and just pulled his guy to the ground. I think that was Ed Dixon. The bad news is it looked like Vinnie Curry got up a little slowly because of it. Holding. Offense. Left tackle. 10-yard penalty, third down. Yeah, that thing, they got yeah, confused. Yeah. It right. was Ed Dixon who was. Find the penalty, fourth down. Yeah, and correction, it was Ed Dixon too, right, right. in here. Dixon, not the As left As he tackle. was going down, you can see he just pulls Vinnie Curry down. And let's keep a little bit of an eye on the right side as well. Mike Rimmers has had some problems with bull rushes over there. We saw it last week in the game in Seattle, and now that pressure is starting to get in the face of Cam Newton on that side, too. So they decline the penalty because it makes it fourth down. And it compels Nortman to put it in the air with Sproles stationed back at his 10-yard line. Close to the fair catch, Sproles holds it in. And that's where Philadelphia will begin its drive. Well, there's your defending rushing champion spectacular season in Dallas. But the first five games, second lowest for a defending rushing champion since the merger. Yards per game, 9-2. Then he had a hamstring issue, inactive, picked up 36 in week four. Then he started to pick it up. 83 against New Orleans and 112 with most of those coming in the second half against the New York Giants on Monday night. Uh, and one of the things that you didn't know, you know, at Oklahoma, he played with Sam Bradford and they did some of this read option, but it's not the same. Marco telling us last night how every single rep helps him. It is a complicated play that you have to get used to running. And Bradford finds the open man. That's going to result in a first down. Miles Austin tackled there by Luke Keekley and Austin with three catches tonight. I tell you, we have seen better stuff in the pocket out of Sam Bradford tonight. That early run, he stepped up, he keeps his eyes down the field. This has been better than what we have seen from him. It's Matthews out in the flat. 
and he gets decked immediately by Davis, and we go immediately to Michelle. Al Panthers defensive end Mario Addison, who sacked Sam Bradford in the game's opening drive. He's doubtful with a shoulder injury. He went back for x-rays, holding his right shoulder. The Panthers do have depth. They came in with five defensive ends, Al. Right, thank you, Michelle. They have depth, but they're also out there a lot because Philadelphia has run a ton of plays. This will be number 58. Second down and 10. And he floats it in. It's caught. Beautiful throw to the 44 yard line to Zach Ertz. Well, you can't cover it any better if you're Thomas Davis, but this is the best we've seen of Sam Bradford. This is the reason he was taken with the first pick. Ertz a little push off there on Davis, but this is just right. Beautifully done. Now they get that second first down. Now let's see if they can wear down a little bit of depleted defensive line. But just enough air under that throw. Final play of the quarter here. And Bradford will throw that one away. So when the fourth quarter begins, it'll be a second down and 10. End of three. Carolina leading Philadelphia. 21-16 on Sunday night football. And tonight's aerial coverage being brought to you by Geico. Now, Michaels, Chris Collinsworth, Michelle DeFoy, as you look down into one of the icons on the NASCAR Tour, the Charlotte Motor Speedway. And back we come now to Bank of America Stadium in Charlotte. Second down and 10 as the third quarter begins with another pop by Thomas Davis, just doing that all night long. And this time it's Matthews. They, they just can't get there. This defensive line just can't do a better job than what they're doing. They're trying that time it was Trey Burton that took a shot at him. But not only is he getting there, Al, he is breaking some huge hits on the tail end of it. You know how hard it is to run that far, then set your feet, and then make a hit like that? Doing it all night. Third and nine. And that's caught, and that'll be a big first down. Miles Austin made some very timely grabs tonight. Been around a long time, mainly, of course, with Dallas and with Cleveland, now in his 10th season in the league. How about a little unsung hero over here? Matt Tobin, who was asked to fill in for Jason Peters at left tackle for the first time in his career, doing a heck of a job against Jared Allen. You thought that maybe that might be a bit of a mismatch. Pace is certainly helping him a little bit, but that is one tough ask right there. He was over there filling in for Andrew Gardner, now filling in for Jason Peters, pretty versatile guy. And that'll be about a four-yard pickup. Called it three. Murray, second and seven. Take a look at the standings quickly here. NFC East, Philly trying to stay even with the Giants, who won today, they beat Dallas. In the South Carolina trying to go to six and oh Atlanta won today beat Tennessee 10 seven to go to six and one. Carolina has never been six and oh they are excited around here big game. Second and seven. Murray fights his way for a first down. Well, sometimes you forget just how good DeMarco Murray is until he gets his shoulders turned up the field and has a chance to get past that initial thrust of what's going on with the defensive line. That time Roman Harper did a good job getting off the block, but Marco Murray, when he's going downhill, he's a little intimidating. Murray to the outside again. And it's Keekley who escorts him out of bounds along with Josh Norman. Gain a one, second and nine. I'll tell you, Josh Norman made a great play there. It looked like he was going to get hooked on the play by Dennis Kelly. He fought hard to get to that outside contain edge and was able to get Murray out of bounds. That was not an easy play. Bradford repositioning the receivers. He needs to rethink Jordan Matthews. He's been a non-factor. Here's a guy who no question is their best. Second and nine, and before he gets hit, he's able to get it away. Roman Harper came in on the blitz to send him to the turf, third down and nine. Yeah, start to bring a little pressure now coming off the edge here, and here's one of those option routes to Sproles. He can cut in, he can cut out, but that time Sam Bradford didn't have enough time to figure out what he was going to do. And Sam Bradford 
He's still trying to figure out those option routes, too. We've seen a few mistakes, too, last week in the game. Third down and nine. Kelly with a play call. That clock, play clock, which very infrequently goes all the way down with Philadelphia, and they have to take a timeout. Don't see that very often, but a big third down and nine. Very big play coming up here. So Philly has to take the timeout. So early in the game, you saw Jason Peters go out, and that forced a complete reshuffling back injury. And then they reshuffled the line, Chris, and it's worked. Yeah, here comes the backup right guard who had to play. Then comes in as the backup left tackle, and he's just been fighting his tail off. I mean, really, uh, you can't ask for anything more than that. This guy had seven starts for Evan Mathis a year ago, so he got some experience. There's no way you can think, okay, I'm going to get ready to play right guard, and I'm also ready to play left tackle, probably the hardest position on offense to play, and yet he's been out there and done a great job with it. A little over 12 to play in regulation, third and nine at the 31. Quick throw. But Josh Huff can go nowhere. Had a little bit of blocking, but dealing with those linebackers, Keekly right here at fourth down. I think Josh Norman knew exactly what this one was going to be. He's going to come up and contain it. And then here comes the jet around the other side. Luke Keekley to make sure that one goes nowhere. All you have to do is slow him down just a little bit. And you know Keekley or Davis, one of the others, is going to get there. So Sturgis now earlier kept a 52-yarder. Will attempt a 50-yarder to try to make it a two-point game. And Sturgis's kick is no good. So they waste the timeout and don't get the three points. They waste the timeout and they give the ball to Carolina at its own 40. Sunday Night Football brought to you by the Kia Sorrento, built for football families. By McDonald's, now serving all-day breakfast and by Corona, who invites you to find your beach. It's the NASCAR Hall of Fame here in Charlotte, opened in 2010, honoring the icons of the sport, drivers, crew members, team owners. All right, Newton now from the 40-yard line beginning this drive. Under pressure here, flips it out. <laughs> Too high flag down, Corey Brown. Brandon Graham's jumping up and down. Offense, he got held. Number 73. 10-yard penalty. First down. That's Michael Orr. Well, you know, Ron Rivera took over here. He was for a number of years on the Philadelphia coaching staff. Great linebacker with the Chicago Bears. He's done quite a job. I mean, this would be their 10th consecutive regular season win if they pull it off tonight. Yeah, and former Cowboys coach Jimmy Johnson one time told him, Listen, just be who you are. You're a defensive coach. Stay in the defensive room. Listen to your offensive guys. Make suggestions, but don't be something you're not. And he really took that to heart, and it served him well. And at first and 20, they pick up a big chunk of that to Devin Funchess, the high draft pick from the University of Michigan at 6'4 and 225. You know, Cam Newton's a big guy, and he may not have the absolute quickest release, but when he decides to load up on the fastball, it's getting there in a hurry. And Devin Funches is a guy that really is going to have to play a big role going down the stretch here for Carolina. Without Kelvin Benjamin, he is that big threat, and he's a little more athletic than you think. Needed 20, picked up exactly that. And got Jonathan Stewart going to the outside to the 43-yard line, and that will take Jonathan Stewart into triple figures tonight. 16 carries for 103 yards. I, that's one of those guys I'd like to have on my team. Uh, you're a heavy team. You want to play power football, and over the course of time, Jonathan Stewart will wear you out. Mike Tolbert is a huge man off to the right-hand side of Cam Newton right there. 
but you see Jonathan Stewart standing right next to him. He may be bigger. The play fake. That's caught. That's Brown. Tackled by Maxwell. And that moves the chains with 11 minutes to go in regulation. And you know, everybody talks about these receivers for Carolina. And oh boy, if we just had a receiver and this and that, these guys are doing a pretty good job here tonight. So you got the read option again. People come closing in, linebackers go flying up, and there you go hitting the slant behind it. Just another option off of it. And keep in mind the number one guy, Kelvin Benjamin, had such a great rookie year. Heard in training camp, gone for the season. And Can will find the hole and exploit that for a big game. Before he's brought down by Walter Thurman, 16 yards. First down. Al, Al, I got to coach high school football, and one thing you figure out in a hurry is that if you're willing to run your quarterback, you get an extra blocker. And it is there, everybody is blocked on that play. If the quarterback just hands it off and stands back there, the defense has the advantage. But when you've got somebody like Cam Newton with the ability to run the ball, they just come up, they've got somebody on everybody here. Four carries for 20 yards and a touchdown. He has him at the 18. And Newton throws off his back foot. Incomplete. I, you know, I love your math. You're right. I mean, you know, if a quarterback hands it off, you got nine blockers. But if he runs it, you got 10. I, I can't tell you how many times, and I, I was a terrible coach. I was just sitting there and listen. But our high school coaches, Dale Mueller and all those guys, they would draw up plays, and I was like, I never thought about it before. I, that extra guy, if the quarterback runs, now we can actually block that guy that keeps making the tackle. Second down and 10, Jonathan Stewart flanking Newton. Contrary in motion. Stewart again. Son gets bunched up. Big third down play coming up as Philadelphia tries to keep it a one possession game. Well, every once in a while, this Fletcher Cox will just make a play. Watch him right here. He's going to get off a of one block by Michael Orr, kind of plow his way through the next one and just push the whole pile over. He's their best defensive player, and he has been for a while. Third down, nine. Four-man rush, good protection, slings it to the end zone, and that's incomplete. Tended for Brown, Maxwell covering, big stop by Philadelphia, limiting them to a field goal attempt, which would make the lead eight, a one possession lead. Just great coverage all the way across the board. Byron Maxwell, who may be having his best game all over Philly Brown on the outside there, but it was, then there's Malcolm Jenkins inside working against Jericho Cotri. Really just nobody open on that play. Kind of nice to have linebackers that can run down the field as well, like Jordan Hicks did there. 35-yard attempt for Graham Gano. And with nine minutes to play in the fourth, it's 24-16 Panthers. Well, we're waiting all day for next Sunday night. You've got Green Bay going to Denver. Each team off this week, so they'll go in 6-0. and oh. Per usual, football night, 7 Eastern time, and then the game. And you look at the history of the league, and we'll show it to you in a second. It doesn't happen very often. And the nose kick will sail through the end zone. So next week, each team, on the first night of November, you go back, the Akron throws the Buffalo All-Americans, the first teams to meet 6-0. You have Parkinson and Hadel, Vikings and Rams, back in 73 New England and Indianapolis at 6 and 0 or better and you had a Brady Manning confrontation now you've got a Manning Rogers matchup something that's rarely happened and that comes your way on Sunday night football a week from tonight you'll be, you'll be there right to it. I will be indeed it's fun to do games like that isn't it great start feeling like the playoffs started already great anticipation now you got Murray, and he gets tripped up. Nice stop as he falls forward, but then Keekley goes down. So Keekley made a really good play. What else is new, but has paid the price. Mm, boy. 
Sometimes, I'm not going to speculate. Sometimes, though, when you reach out with those arms, weird things happen. And that has thrown uh, this big crowd into momentary silence, but now all of a sudden, they feel a heck of a lot better. The new chant goes up as Keekly jogs off the field. Well, that was a great shot, though, at the moment that you could see the pain in his face as he rolled over. And there's a guy that's used to playing in his place. A.J. Klein, when he had the concussion, played a lot of football. Here goes Murray again around the right side, and he's able to stay in bounds close to a first down. I think they're going to spot it just past the marker. They check out Keekley, who missed three games earlier this year with a concussion. Work on him. And Murray has just moved the six first down. And Jason Kelsey, one of the most athletic centers there is, he's going to try and get out in front of this thing and find one of those linebackers. That time he found Klein. Well, play action. Bradford's going to be taken down by the shirt. They want short. Comes in for the sack. Well, you just can't do it better than this guy has the last two weeks. It's just been fun to watch. There he goes again, K1 short. And Alan Barber looked like he had him under control and didn't. So short came into the game with two sacks. You don't get a lot when you play the interior, and he's got two tonight. How strong is he? He had him with about three fingers. You know, Del Beckham. <laughs> Swing pass. Matthews. And there's Keekley right back in the game after missing one play. Who rides him into the boundary. Third down. It'll be third and 15. Wasn't it interesting, though? Keekley goes out for one play, and it's the one time, I think, the whole game that Marco Murray got it turned up the boundary and able to make a run. Comes back in, and you don't get that same play. Halfway through the quarter. Third and 15. Nathan Wickery doing a nice job in the slot. We have not heard from Jordan Matthews tonight. Deep drop, fires, and incomplete. Miles Austin was the intended receiver. So fourth and 15, and Carolina will get the ball back. Now, every once in a while, you'll see Sam Bradford. Saw it last week, too. You know, they're just guys that are hurt. You're not used to playing with them. Riley Cooper even had a bit of a knee. Receiver turns outside. He throws it inside. They're still growing. Donnie Jones. Booming kick. Fielded at the 20. And getting to get corralled at the 24-yard line. 53 yard boot. Four yard run back, less than seven to play. Eight point game. A lot of unbeaten teams for the last week in October. Bengals, Denver, and Green Bay were all off today. New England went to 6 0 with that win, and Carolina trying to match those others. And they're up by eight, and they have the ball with 6.56 to play. From the 24, fake toss. And then a couple of yards there for Jonathan Stewart. And Jordan Hicks has been a tremendous player, but he just bounced right off of Jonathan Stewart on that one. Slippery guy inside. Here he comes right here. Watch him. He's got him dead to right. So he's in perfect position, but Jonathan Stewart, as the game is going on, is just wearing people out. Look at that. Hey, even gushing. Hey, even gushing, even gushing. Oh. Stewart again. Bends his way up to the 31. Taking more time off the clock. Under six by the time we have the next snap. 112 yards tonight for the eighth year man out of Oregon. Yep, and now we're starting to see a little desperation out of Billy Davis's defense. They're bringing Malcolm Jenkins down to help on the run. Not on this one, but in some of these previous plays. Got to get him stopped. Okay, he's right in the middle of the pile now. There. Third and two. And Newton goes. That's caught and just enough 
for a first down is Corey Brown up to the 35 yard line. And a little bit of clock full right now. Here they come. They're going to have a little delay blitz coming out of there, but that was just enough and another nice catch by one of these unknown receivers for the Carolina Panthers. And boy, every first down, just a little bit of a dagger for Chip Kelly. He needs that ball back. And Cam unloads and incomplete. Good coverage that time by Malcolm Jenkins all over Corey Brown. Second down and 10. I just can't tell you how impressed I am with Malcolm Jenkins. I mean, here's a guy playing safety that is in one on one coverage with a slot receiver and all over. Thrown. Illegal contact. Defense number 23. There's a five yard penalty and an automatic first down. On the other side, it's Nolan Carroll. There's Olsen right there. Literally five years, he did a little one of those out and up kind of moves, and I think Carroll knew he was beat. You go, oh, that's a terrible penalty, but really that wasn't. That was a good penalty. He had to do that. Gives him a first down at the 40 yard line. Stewart. <laughs> He's a runaway truck, is oh, what he my is. Goodness. Ed Dixon comes in there and plays fullback for him, but it doesn't matter. And he's just going to run over. Walter Payton would be proud of this one. Watch how far this pile moves after contact. Hit right there. Four or five yards. Yep. Yep. Marshawn Lynch like 116 yards, 20 carries for him. Second and five. Even that chance, isn't he? D'Angelo Williams. Yep. Finally not splitting times, and this guy is a way of wearing you out late. Call in the number, setting up a third and short as we tick down under four minutes now in regulation. Yeah, but now you got the big issues. You're either going to have 240 pounds of Jonathan Stewart or 240 pounds of Cam Newton. Take your choice. Probably hit you with a read option here and leave somebody unblocked. And wherever that guy goes, they're going to do the other. Well, they take Stewart after they put Tolbert in, so you've got 235 pounds of him. Yeah, at least 235 pounds of him. Third down, short two. And Cameron Artis Payne has his first carry of the night with Tolbert as the fullback, and it's fourth down. Isn't that interesting? They go to the rookie. From Auburn, a fifth round draft choice, took Stewart out, kept Tolbert in as the fullback, and then give Artis Payne his first carry of the night and his fourth down. You got me. Yeah, you got me too. You got me, but that's a break. Going to get some pressure right here, I think, from Brandon Graham, I believe, who just made him slow down a bit. And then it was Hicks and Carroll that came over to clean it up, but that was an interesting decision to say the least. This fourth and one, and Philadelphia has to take a timeout here. So Kelly conserving the time. He has one timeout left. Remember, he had to take one earlier with the play clock ready to run out. You got Darren Sproles back and Brad Nortman to punt. But now you kind of play it four down territory throughout, right? So offense gets a little easier. Play calling gets a little easier when you know you have all four downs. Put the rush on, but Norton gets it away. Fair catch called for. Sproles collects it at the 11 yard line. So they have to go 89 yards. They have 312 left in regulation in Charlotte on Sunday Night Football. 24-16 Carolina, 312 remaining in the fourth. Philly starts this drive from the 11. Davis and Keekley have been magnificent. Keekley has 10 tackles tonight. Davis has 12. Four-man rush. Bradford will go down. A flag is thrown, though. The ball is loose as well. Jared Allen got there. So the ball was out. Allen gets there, but it's all about the flag right now. Yeah, I think K1 Short got his hand on the football. Holding 
offense, number 64. That penalty is declined. The result of the play, the second down. That's Matt Tobin. They're short right there. They go right through Dennis Kelly. Oh, baby, that ball came out, didn't it? Yeah, but the I think the Eagles recovered, recovered yeah. it, yeah. Jason Kelsey was there. A little swing, and that's behind Sproles. Adam, and he had some room to roam. Instead, now you got a third and 16 from your five yard line. Yeah, so much for four down territory, you don't make it here. There's no question, that was a fumble. It was just recovered by Philadelphia. Right, Kelsey. Kelsey fell on it. Third and 16. Deep drop, Bradford steps up, low throw. Uh-oh. A flag is down at the end of the play because Bradford went down to the end zone. Was the ball tipped? It looked like it was. If the ball's tipped, there's no pass interference. And that's what Rivera is saying. The officials confer. Now, there's a difference between. There is no foul for pass interference as the ball was tipped. Third down. His what? arm may have been hit. Take a look at this. Go show it to see it. Did his arm get hit and that caused it? Yep. Yes, That's sir. Exactly what happened. The arm was hit. The ball was not tipped. And I think there's a difference there. Yes, there is. Tony Ely. Which means that would be pass interference. We'll double check. Yep. Every week there's some new rule that I've never seen before. Right. So I'm not sure. But that is not tipped. And there's a challenge flag now because Kelly's thinking the same thing. This is one of those things. I'm, I'm even wondering whether it's reviewable because there's a penalty that's involved in this. Philadelphia is challenging the ruling on the field that the ball was tipped. All right, so they can challenge that. If they win this challenge, it would be pass interference. Back after this. <laughs> this is cool. <crazy. laughs> All right, they're still reviewing this, but it's pretty clear when you see the replay. The call on the field was the ball was tipped. It was not. It is Bradford's arm that gets hit. Now, you can't review normally a penalty, but in this particular case, the flag went down, then it was picked back up, and it was considered to be tipped. And now they're going to put, we think, they're going to put the flag back down, call it pass interference, and give Philadelphia a first down. So they picked up the flag based on the fact that it was tipped. It was not, so they put the flag back down. Here it is. After review, the ruling on the field has changed. The ball was not tipped. Therefore, the pass interference on the defense will be reinstated. It'll be first down and 10 at the 15-yard line. You know, that's such a tough call. I think it was Keekley, right? because he thought the ball was tipped, which freed him up to go make the hit. He just didn't know. Right. You know, so in a rare case, his intelligence of making that play with a tip pass worked against him. Because that was, what, third and 15, something like yeah. that? It would have made it fourth down. It would have almost forced them to punt, even though they have one timeout. They do have the two-minute warning. Instead, at the 15-yard line. And down he goes. He gets sacked by Jared Allen. Came right over Tobin. Two sacks for him. The old veteran out there playing with a bad back, pinched nerve, but when they need it most, this is why they made the deal to bring him in here. They watched tape of him. They saw enough. They said, we need a veteran with all these guys hurting. And boy, did he deliver there. Second and 16. Over the middle, that's caught. After the 16 goes Jordan Matthews, tackled by Keekley. And that's going to make it third down and nine as we tick down to the two-minute warning. I'll tell you, I would stay right inside. This protection's getting a little shaky. I'd go to Matthews. I'd go to Ertz. I'd go to somebody quick and inside. Sproles. And instead, the Ertz and through his hands, covered by Thomas Davis, takes us to the two-minute warning. It'll be fourth down and nine.
two minutes left in Charlotte. Some wild and wacky stuff tonight. What else is new with Sunday Night Football? Swagging post game report. Michelle on the field with the stars of the game, Bob Tony and Mike. Break it down. Preview look at next week's Packers Broncos game. Here's your ball game right now for Philadelphia. Fourth and nine. They must convert from the 16. Bradford throws. And it's through the hands of Miles Austin. A lot of drop balls tonight. And they turn it over on downs. It's the second really big throw that Sam Bradford has put right on the money. A little high, but that's one for Miles Austin. I think even he would agree. Somehow you lay out, you do whatever you have to do to make that catch. It's a good route. Just didn't make enough plays. Mm, 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 mm. 23 of 42, 180 for Bradford. Philly can only stop the clock one time. Stewart, the running back. And doesn't have to add to the total at this point. Stopped at the line of scrimmage and a timeout. 30-second timeout, Philadelphia. Just their third and final timeout. Well, I tell you, it has been a show tonight for Carolina defensively. Josh Norman, I think, gave up one completion for three yards. Luke Keekley, Thomas Davis were simply incredible in there. Benet Ben Wickery playing on the slot against Jordan Matthews. Made some plays. Jared Allen, when they needed it most, came up with a big sack. And Kwan Short was halfway to... Honolulu, is it in Honolulu <laughs> this year? I got to keep uh, up with where the Pro Bowl I'm, I'm is lost now. Track. Taiwan, I don't know. We'll find out. They can't run the clock all the way out, but they already are in field goal range, so that's some major disaster strikes. Stewart, they have to run a play now till a little over a minute remains in the fourth quarter. Is it, isn't it interesting though with all the well, you got to throw it every down and the spread offenses and that's the way it goes that here's a team that's undefeated now old schooling it. This thing is definitely made in the image of Ron Rivera who says we're going to run it when we want we're going to run it when we have to and we're going to run it when they know we have to. And he's proud of the fact that this is a physical beat em up kind of a team. And Rivera happy to now take a timeout. Then they can run a play, and you have about 20 or so seconds left. How about these playmakers tonight? Thomas Davis has been all over the place, and when he gets there, some of the biggest hits of the night. Luke Keekley just flying over the top. You cannot cut him. You can't beat him to the point. Kwan short inside has battled his way through so many different kinds of blocks. And then Josh Norman, as he has done all season, has been brilliant. And the coordinator, Mr. McDermott, doing a, a heck of a job once again. And he will become, I would think, one of the hot assistants. Yeah, no question about it. He and Ron Rivera has made quite a team here and trained by great Jim Johnson in Philadelphia. Right, here's Stewart. Stewart gets the ball to the 10 yard line. So they can run that all the way down now to about 15 seconds or so. And then either run a play and see if Philadelphia can get it down in 90 yards. They'll call timeout again with a couple of seconds left. Interesting decision here, Al. Well, kicking this field goal. I mean, the one way you lose this game, some kind of a crazy block kick that gets returned. You know what? I don't think I kicked the field goal. Here. I don't think I do either. Not the way my defense is playing. Takes eight points to tie me. But they're going to send the unit out there. It's about the only way that the Eagles could win this game now. Do you get, you know, and we've seen it. 
in the past. Cam Chancellor's done it. Jamie Collins did it the other night. Do you take somebody, your best athlete, and try and jump them over the center and block a kick and see if you can steal a game? Maybe Malcolm Jenkins takes a run and leap. If you get caught on anybody doing that on top of somebody and touch them, it's illegal for whatever it is, launching or whatever that mm -hmm. rule is. And nobody really in that position to try here. So they'll attempt a 29-yard field goal. There it was. And that will uh, take care of that. They did it. They tried yep. it. They jumped right over the top of it and just didn't block the kick. Brian Brayman. Oh, my gosh. They pulled it off and just didn't get the block. That was that was a little dicey right there if you're a Carolina fan. Here it goes. He's going right over the top. No contact. He just didn't get there soon enough. That would have been something, wouldn't it? Tell me. That is one of those plays that I think all coaches have to keep in the back of their mind. Desperation time. Really, as a field goal unit, all you have to do is just raise up and take his foot or anything going over the top, and then it's a foul on the guy trying to jump over. But if he makes it clean and blocks it, that is it. But this is some win and some celebration here in this city for the Carolina Panthers. First time ever, 6-0. 6-0, they have a Monday night game next week against Indianapolis. Things beginning to uh, get into a little bit of flux there. They lost to New Orleans today, and then they have Green Bay in here to wrap up the first half of their season. Are they going to go to 6-0? and well, Next time Carrie Underwood sings, they're going to have two 6-0 and teams going at it, right? Right. Congratulations to her on her new album, Tearing It Up. Listen to it last night. It was fantastic. Love having her singing our opening. Gets us fired up every week. Waiting all day. Yeah. It's something special. Hey, you, could, you could get a, uh, a Carolina Green Bay game on November the 8th that could have two undefeated teams. All right, we'll do that too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's our game. No, it's not. We'll flex into yeah, it, though. We'll yeah, of course. One of those other networks probably give that one. Not up. a problem. Yeah. The CW will let us have it. <laughs> Bradford. A little toss out here to Sproles. Too little time in a two possession game. So Philadelphia will. Go to three and four. The Giants will be on top in the NFCs by themselves. Philadelphia has a bye next week. They're off, and we will see Philadelphia on Sunday night in two weeks at Dallas. So we'll get the uh, Eagles back to back. As Sproles makes the catch here with seven seconds. Yeah, and perhaps the biggest blow tonight for Philadelphia. Obviously, you lose the game, but. Got to find out what's going on with Jason Peters. He is the best. He is the best player on this offense for sure. And they need him back. And this little toss and it just pads the stat sheet with two seconds left. Give me, give me your Bradford report card tonight. I thought he did a few good things. I really did. I, I thought he looked tougher in the pocket, scrambling around, made a few awkward throws. They weren't open a lot tonight. Right. You know, you, I watched it down the field. He needs a little help occasionally, too. Man, those drops didn't help either. Man, he'll end this one barring a defensive foul that gets knocked down. <laughs> Who else? Who else? He's all over the line of scrimmage. He's in the backfield, and then he's 60 yards downfield. Luke Keekley. Great win for that man right there. Tremendous. Congratulations to Ron Rivera. So they won their last four regular season games last year. They've now won 10 consecutive regular season games over the past two years. Philly gets a week off. Carolina meets Indianapolis next week. Final score is 27 to 16.